Welcome back to Mr. Latham's Economics. Today we're going to talk about gross domestic product or GDP. First thing we need to do is define GDP. The definition is, and we're going to keep it real brief here, we need to talk about fair value or market value, in other words what you'd be willing to pay for something, of all finished goods, and finished goods are things that uh, are being used for their final purpose. So, for instance, a car door get, that you're going to put on a car is not a finished good, but the car, of course, is a finished good. And it's generally for one year, so we measure it for one year, and we measure one country. Okay, so the fair value of all final goods and services, finished goods, you know, different way of call, referring to it, over a year in a country. That's gross domestic product. It allows us to measure how big our economy is and also how much it grows. Okay, two methods. The two methods are the expenditures method or what we spend. The chores, there we go. And the other method is the income method or what we receive. Okay, so we have expenditures and income. How do we know those two methods are going to equal to each other? Well, if I spend money, someone has to receive it, right? And likewise, if someone else has to spend money, then maybe I'll receive it. Or if I receive money, somebody's got to be spending it. So either way, we're covered. Okay, so one person's spending... is another person's income and vice versa. Therefore, the two methods have to equal each other. All right, moving on. Okay, so the expenditures method. How do you do it? Consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports. Okay, so C is consumption. There's consumption. Okay, people are generally responsible for consumption. Okay, investment, we represent as I sub G. That's businesses or firms. G is government, which makes perfect sense. Net exports is other countries. Well, net exports can also be represented in either one of these worked. You don't really need both. I have both here just to show, show you. But it's exports, which is what we produce. Okay, we, we make this. Okay, and imports are made elsewhere, right? We import them. They're made, from, made in China or Japan or Mexico or wherever. Those are imports, okay? So our, the United States gross domestic product is consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports, Okay, that's the expenditures method. The income method, we use cell to find it. Remember, cell is capital, entrepreneurship, land, and labor. Okay, well, what's the income from capital? Well, we already said it's interest. Okay, the income from capital is interest, and we call that, uh, we, we call that income interest. For entrepreneurship, we make either profit or or loss, we represent interest, by the way, with the little i. So entrepreneurship, profit or loss. Land, we represent, we, we, we receive rent. Oh, my pencil's screwing up on me. Give me one second here. We'll be done. We'll have it now. Okay, everybody go with that. That's the income method. This expenditures method and the income method have to equal each other. Okay, next thing, we have two different types of t ways we refer to GDP. One is GDP and it's nominal. That sub N is nominal. Okay, and that's the actual amount of GDP. So this year, whatever our GDP, that's our nominal GDP. So that's how much we spend on everything. Real GDP is adjusted for inflation, okay? 
and we're going to we're going to use the symbol pi for inflation okay just remember in in economics we're going to use pi for inflation that's pretty common uh and so you know always check of course make sure it's okay in your case but generally speaking if you use pi we have inflation okay how do we get from nominal to real gdp well Number one here, we're talking about we know how much nominal GDP changed. Let's say, for instance, this year, nominal GDP increased 5%. Okay, well, that sounds good, 5% growth. No, that's 5% increase in total, but part of that growth is what? Well, it's inflation. So you have to take out the rate of inflation. So, for instance, if nominal GDP grew 5%, but inflation was 3%, then our real growth is only 2%. Does that make sense? Hopefully that works. Now, the other way you can do it is if you know nominal GDP and you know the price index, okay? In this case, we'll call it we'll call we'll say this price index, okay? We'll put price index right there equals real GDP. Well, let's say nominal GDP is 105 whoops. 105 billion and the price index is 103 well 105 divided by 1 and it's 103 percent will give us a real GDP of roughly 102 billion okay well you can see the two answers are are roughly the same. Whether we say we had a 5% increase and we had 3% inflation, so we had 2% real growth, or we were we went from 100 to 105 billion in nominal GDP, the index is 103, which is a represented representation for inflation, then you still get that same 2% growth. And we just use them in different situations, but they're trying to get to the exact same place. Okay? Here we kind of show it, okay, nominal, nominal, GDP nominal divided by the consumer price index, CPI, you can see consumer price index right here, or also the GDP deflator. So if you divide nominal GDP by a price index, one of those two, you can get real GDP, or you can take inflation out of the growth in nominal GDP, and you can get the increase in real GDP. Either way, we're adjusting inflation out because it doesn't help us. If the price of, you know, if if everything goes up in price and we spend more money, well, we don't sit there and say, "Wow, look how much better off we are." If we only could buy the exact same things, well, we spent more money for the same things. That isn't really a benefit. Our country's no better off. Okay, let's move on. Now, this right here, you're going to need to just pause this and write it all down. This is the GDP memory quiz. You need to know all these things. You just need to be able to state them. I give you a blank sheet of paper. You're going to write, number one, the expenditure method equals the income method. Okay, why? Because one person's spending is another's income. Then I'm going to say, give me the two equations. Well, consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports equals interest plus profit or loss plus rent or wage plus wages so those are two now two pieces you need to know about consumption includes okay what is consumption includes it includes durable goods non-durable goods and services durables are things that last more than three years well that just kind of think of it generally as things that'll last more than three years would a refrigerator be a durable yes would a computer be a durable yeah probably um, would a would an air conditioner be a durable? Sure, it would. Non durables. Well, those are things that don't last three years. A pencil, a pen, um, you know, toys, stuff like that. They're, you know, they don't necessarily. They're not going to last you more than three years. Those are non durables. And then services are things like haircuts. Okay. Now you need to know those three. Business investment. Well, it includes business investment, which is number one right here, but it also, which, which is just purchases of factories and equipment and all that kind of stuff, it also includes changes in business inventories. We'll talk about that some more, but basically, if you think about it, if you, if you have a car company and they build a whole bunch of cars and they didn't sell, they didn't sell any, well, then the, since there's no sales, it doesn't go into GDP, right? Wrong. 
people actually produce those things and GDP helps measure the production, what we've done, and people got paid to do it, right? And so we need to have that changes in business inventories to account for that increase in those number of cars, even though we didn't sell them because those employees did get paid. Okay, it also includes new construction. Why does it include new construction? Well, new construction has to go somewhere. They decided to put it into investment because it kind of it kind of behaves like investments. Construction, businesses building up, uh, investment and things like that, they tend to go together because they're really expensive. And when the economy is really good, people spend, buy those expensive things. When it's really bad, they tend to not buy those really expensive things. So they just decided to put it there. So know the three c components of consumption. Know the three components of investment. And also, then if I ask you, tell me how I can go from nominal to real GDP, give me one of those two things, either nominal if my change in the nominal GDP minus my, my inflation will give me my change in my real GDP or that I can divide nominal GDP by a price index to get real GDP. Okay, that's it for our beginning discussion of GDP and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.